afternoon, and yes, possibly good evening. Right now, this is the first time, but I'm recording in the deep, deep evening. Why? Glad you asked. Not because you did, but because I said why. Mm. Because this week has been nuts. It's been one of those weeks where everything that could go wrong went wrong. However, I will say my family, my little girls have finally learned how to share. In that, they shared the stomach bug with me. It's been amazing. Not really. Not been amazing at all. Um, yeah, so um, crazy week, busy week, hectic week. Um, we are kicking off the summer really strong here in my job, and it was just full force, and it's a blessing, it's wonderful, and I love every bit of it. So, uh, what gets pushed down on the priority list is this. It gets pushed down on the priority list, and that's okay, because that's the way life is supposed to go. Okay, and so anywho, so yeah, we've been sick. Continue to be praying for us. Um, I've lost about eight to ten pounds in uh, two and a half days, and I'm still only eating one and a half to two meals a day. Uh, so hence why you still see me sipping on some Gatorade. That I just did now. That's going to give me, for some reason, when I drink Gatorade, I'm like, okay, like it's refreshing. It's good. Okay, uh, so, anywho, uh, yeah, uh, also, with me, like, losing weight and I'm not supposed to be, I've had the desire to eat an entire pizza by myself, and there's a good Andy Bernard quote where he talks about eating the pizza over the sink like a rat. That's, that's kind of where I'm at, even though I just can't. Um, there's just no way. That I could do that right now. I have the desire to, but I just can't. Uh, I actually don't think, I think my stomach has also shrunk, so I can't eat a whole pizza. Anywho, I get I get sidetracked. Uh, I do want to talk about a couple things. We are going over the Baptist faith and message. That um, is a confession for uh, the Southern Baptist Convention. And you're listening to this on Monday, the June 10th, which is apparently my birthday. My wife reminded me that it was my birthday. And I'm like, oh shoot, that's right, I have a birthday. Uh, when I was on vacation, my mom treated every day uh, like my birthday with like a little present on. And I'm getting off in another rap trail. But I caught myself this time um, with like a little present on the bed each day. Um, and so that was really special. But I really, I really just kind of let it go. Um, yeah, once you're just kind of over a certain mark, you just get over it. But yeah, you're going to be listening to this on Monday, June 10th, which is my birthday. Uh, and um, I think, I could be wrong, but it may be the first day of the convention. Um, let me, let me just look. Why I have you guys here. And let's just look. June 14th. That's not right. Wait. Did I look at the wrong ones? I think I may be looking at the wrong um, things that needed to be passed. There's the executive committee. Um, but, blah, 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 blah. but anywho, regardless, it will be at least the week of the 2024 uh, Southern Baptist Convention, and there it is, right there, June 9th. So it starts on Sunday, uh, 10th would be a Tuesday, then I guess it goes to Wednesday. What I really think happens, there's a shepherd's conference in there, which is like just for pastors, um, and that may be on the 9th too. I'm not sure how all that works. I, I have honestly, I think I have tried to go to the Southern Baptist Convention like seven years, and nothing has, like, I always find an excuse why not to go, and somebody was like, well, this year you've got kids, and I'm like, yeah, that just enables the excuse that I'm not going. Uh, however, I do have plans to go within the next two years. Uh, I got another pastor friend of mine who is like wanting me to go, and I'm like, 
I think I need to go that year. Like, that would be the year to go. That would be a year where not only I could go, but my, some of my family could go, some of my girls and, and my mom. Uh, and so really looking forward to actually being able to go to one of these because uh, I hear they're always really fun to be around, a lot of fun people, uh, even though we may disagree on some of the things that are coming up. Uh, one of them is uh, I could motion to consider. Three motions passed as written. Uh, it takes two years for things to go through. Um, and so I do want to talk about this before we dive into salvation because it relates to Southern Baptist. Um, and so there's that one, there's that one. This one is the big one. Okay, uh, so passes this year. It's set in stone. It's a part of our confession. Uh, and I think, I don't know if they get permission or if they get if this permisses this to happen or if it's something that's just going to happen i'm not sure how it works i move that the messengers of this convention amend article six of the baptist faith and message 2000 in keeping with its uh historical roots founded uh, in the baptist faith and message 1925 adding the words elder and overseer alongside the use of the word pastor and i think that's because of the term presbyteros, um, uh, poimen, all those are kind of used interchangeably uh, in the Greek. Um, the amended portion of the article would read, uh, in such a congregation, each member is responsible and accountable to Christ as Lord. Uh, this kind of talks about how, this kind of reminds me at least of how the Lord is uh, Lord over the conscience. Um, it's two uh, scriptural offices are that of pastor, elder, overseer. Okay, those are the, what we would translate uh, into the English as presbyteros, poimen, things like that. I think there's one other term that I'm forgetting. Um, and deacon. Okay, while both men and women are gifted for service in the church, the office of pastor, elder, overseer is limited to qualified men uh limited to men as qualified by scripture hang on let me bring that up on the screen for you guys my viewers on youtube so you can sit there and pause that if you need to i'm just going to keep going so uh that's kind of the one thing that's going to get hopefully passed uh, i say hopefully because i think uh clarity is always good yes it may push people out but truth has a um a funny way of dividing that from heresy uh and so i think this is good more clarity the better uh where we stand on certain things i think it's great um, and if it kicks uh, heretics to the corner, that's okay. So, uh, yeah, so be in prayer for the Southern Baptist Convention. It's always really interesting. Uh, my uncle, who goes to this thing year after year, uh, he said something really interesting when I was thinking about maybe I shouldn't be a Southern Baptist. And he said, Southern Baptists don't always get it right. Uh, but he said most of the time they do, it just takes them a while to get there. Uh, and so I know there's been some things going on with the ERLC as well. Uh, and so I pray that that will also uh, figure out what's going on with all of these uh, abuse things uh, and abuse victims. I pray that they get that situated as well because that's, that's a bigger issue to me at least than, than that. Um, so, uh, Southern Baptist Convention, be in prayer for that as it is going on as you are listening to this. Uh, anywho, we are going to sh go straight into our um, lovely, uh, what do you call it? Our confession, our Baptist faith minute. We're going to go over salvation today, okay? You ready? All right, that's like nine minutes worth of stuff before we get into it. So, uh, let's pray this goes quicker. All right, let's go. All right, Baptist Faith and Message 2000. This is whew, salvation. Okay, I need to remind you of something. Things that I'm going to say don't necessarily reflect the views of each and every church member, okay? However, uh, I'm going to give you my thoughts uh, and my kind of biblical perspective on some of these things, okay? Uh, shouldn't separate us too much. Why? Because we're all united in Christ Jesus, hopefully. So, uh, but some really good things in here. I think really some really good encouraging things. Um, 
because of where I'm at in, in my life, uh, this does nothing but encourage me. Salvation involves the redemption of the whole man and is offered freely to all who accept Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior, by whom his own blood obtained eternal redemption for the believer. In its broadest sense, salvation includes regeneration, justification, sanctification, and glorification. There is no salvation apart from personal faith in Jesus Christ as Lord. Amen. We love this. Okay, uh, So it's the redemption of the whole body, the whole man. Uh, not the whole body, but the whole man. Uh, and we'll talk about the body when we get to glorification. Uh, and is offered freely to all. Okay, So as we know, God desires all men to be saved. It is offered. Uh, by whom his own blood obtained eternal redemption for the believer. Okay, uh, In its broadest sense. So it's, it's wanting that you know, big scope. Um, of salvation that includes, okay, and it breaks it down into uh, four parts. Uh, when I talk about um, the three stages of the Christian faith, uh, I generally include justification, sanctification, glorification. Uh, this one actually adds one, uh, and that's regeneration. Uh, and so we're going to spend a little bit of time on that, uh, on regeneration more so than justification, sanctification, and glorification. Uh, however, we'll look at kind of a, a big text for, or, or a small text for justification, sanctification, and glorification. Okay, uh, And then the last part, there is no salvation apart from personal faith in Jesus Christ as Lord, okay? Uh, so here we talk about how salvation is inclusive for all, like it is for every tribe, every nation, people of every tongue. It is for everybody. God desires all types of men uh, to be saved, okay? However, it is also exclusive, knowing that the only way to God, the only way to heaven— is through Jesus. There's your exclusivity. So when people ask me, is the Bible or is the gospel inclusive or exclusive, I'm going to say it's both. I'm going to say yes, okay? Uh, because it is open freely to all. It is a gospel. It is good news. It is salvation for all types of people. Uh, however, it is exclusive in that um, I do not believe, and as a part of a Southern Baptist, I do not believe that Allah, a Buddha, is going to get you to God. I do not believe you will be glorified in the sense of having a perfect body and living here on the new heaven and new earth according to Revelation. Okay, so uh, And then it breaks it down into those parts. So I'm just going to leave that there and go in because it breaks it down into these four parts. And regeneration is uh, one that I think is... I'm glad they did this uh, in a sense that it's just so encouraging knowing that um, God has a chosen priesthood, and um, that is lovely and a picture of love that we don't truly get uh, unless there is this external force that is desiring me and redeems me um, despite who I am. I don't get that. I don't get this type of love. I don't get this type of redemption from anything else other than Christ Jesus our Lord. Anyway, regeneration. Okay, uh, Regeneration. This is what it says in the Baptist faith and message. Regeneration or the new birth, so we're gonna, they're going to use those interchangeably. Okay, I think I would as well. Uh, is a work of God's grace whereby believers become new creation. Okay, You can think Colossians 2. Okay. Uh, it is a change of heart wrought by the Holy Spirit through conviction of sin to which the sinner responds in repentance toward God and faith in Lord Jesus Christ, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Repentance and faith are inseparable experiences of grace. Okay? Uh, we believe that. Repentance and faith are inseparable. Okay? Uh, but here's kind of the, the conundrum. I, I heard um, a sermon or heard a soundbite over Alistair Begg, and he talks about the thief on the cross, and uh, the thief on the cross had uh, no prior knowledge of what justification meant, or sanctification, or glorification. Like, he didn't have a position on certain things. He didn't know, you know, if it was right or wrong for a woman to be pastor. He just 
right there in that moment, only thing we know is that Jesus redeemed him, possibly right there on the cross when he said, this day you will be with me in paradise. We don't know how he stood on baptism, okay? We just know that Jesus stepped in his place and he was saved, okay? Uh, so uh, he had repentance of what he did, and he had the act of faith to say what he said on the cross, okay? So they're inseparable even on the cross. However, for us believers who have that moment of faith, and I'm going to talk about, I'm going to say this multiple times, so forgive me. This all happens in a moment, even though we're going to kind of dig in little push over certain things. When you have faith in Jesus Christ, it is going to lead to obedience. It is going to lead you to act and follow the Lord Jesus regardless. So in saying that, I just have faith, but I, I don't really have, you know, doctrine or theology or, or what the case may be, if you love the Lord and he has redeemed your life, you're going to fall in love with him and you're going to dive into his word and learn more about your personal Savior and learn more about this loving God who has redeemed you through Christ. Uh, and so that's going to look, you're going to look at the word and you're going to say, I've repented. Now, now what do I do? How do I live? And James is a great example of this, you know, a great just practical book over how Christians should live, act, and think. And so here, when we're dealing with regeneration, even though this happens in a moment, this first part of the Baptist faith and message, it says, it is a work of God's grace whereby believers become new create, uh, creatures in Christ Jesus, okay? It is a change of heart wrought by the Holy Spirit through the conviction of sin. We think about how God replaces this heart of stone with a heart of flesh, and then we have this redeeming faith that says, I, I see Jesus. You know, the scales are lifted off our eyes, and we behold the Lamb. And that is kind of where I'm, I'm at with this, is that repentance, I truly believe, even though it was a Reformation term, that repentance, repentance, whoo boy, where am I going? Like I said, folks, it's late. Regeneration precedes our faith. Uh, and so when we think about justification and that promised seal of the Holy Spirit, regeneration right here is going to precede us having faith. Now, it all happens in a moment, but it is God who initiates this. And let me just uh, kind of share some verses for you. Philippians 1.29, it says, For it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ you should not only believe in him, but also suffer for his sake. Second Corinthians 4, uh, 4 through 6 says, In their case, the God, of this wor the God of this world has blinded the minds of unbelievers uh, to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Christ Jesus is Lord. Okay? Uh, John 3, 7 through 8, uh, Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. John uh, 6, 44, uh, probably uh, one, of the f one of my favorite passages in thinking about uh, how God redeems me despite who I am, and then I'm coming to faith. It says that no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up. Correcting his opponents with gentleness, God may perhaps grant them repentance, leading to the knowledge of truth. That's 2 Timothy 2.25. Okay? Uh, so, there you have it. That's just where I'm standing with repentance and regeneration preceding faith. Okay? Uh, now, let's keep going because we're already 19 minutes into this, and so I want to kind of be quick. Um, so, uh, justification, it's God's gracious and full acquittal upon principles of his righteousness of all sinners who repent and believe in Christ. Justification brings the believer unto a salvation or to a relationship of peace and favor with God. 
peace with God. When uh, Genesis 3.15 says, I will put enmity there, and then all of a sudden there is, there is peace through Jesus Christ. So not only do we have peace in our lives and peace with others, we have peace with a holy God uh, who has a righteous wrath stored up against non-believers, and yet we have peace with him through Jesus Christ. Justification is such a sweet sweet song of redemption, okay? Uh, and this peace is everlasting, okay? Uh, so when I think about the Christian life and it being broken down into these three stages, justification is you're justified with Christ, sanctification being uh, you're becoming more conformed into the image of Christ, and then glorification is going to be ultimately your glorified, new, resurrected body, okay? That's what I would distinguish, okay? I just read to you justification. Uh, let me read sanctification. Sanctification is the experience beginning in regeneration by which the believer is set apart to God's purpose and is enabled to progress towards moral and spiritual maturity uh, through the presence and power of the Holy Spirit dwelling in him. Growth in grace should continue throughout the regenerate person's life. This is what's real beautiful and what I meant by when you're, when you're sealed with the promised Holy Spirit that you're going to you're going to act in faith, and you're going to be constantly conformed and into the image of Christ. And this is like a painstaking process uh, because many of you know have lived life. Um, life is short. It is full of valleys. It is full of hills. Uh, it is full of highs, full of lows. Uh, just like I said this week, uh, pretty rough. Um, pretty rough. I'm just going to say this. It's just rough. Yet, there's still peace there. Uh, God is teaching me something through all of this, knowing that he's the one in charge, and I'm not. And there, just in, in saying that, there's peace, knowing that God's in charge and I'm not. Because if I was in charge um, as, uh, oh my gosh, I want to say my wife quotes this from a TV show, but I don't remember what it's called. But we're going to, uh, if I can say hell, uh, in a Gucci knock knockoff handbag. Okay, uh, so uh, if I was in charge, that's exactly what would happen. Okay, uh, but remember this: uh, I remember our pastor has said this to me more than once. But the power of the Holy Spirit dwelling in Him, and that's who we have as our advocate, who is continually working towards us and interceding for us, helping us do the right thing. We, I'll, I'll be honest, I, I think that I agree in saying that we really don't tap into him as much as we could. Uh, I think sometimes we do treat him as the Cousin Eddie of the Trinity, uh, but he is the one who is residing in us and helping us move towards more like Christ. Uh, and so let me just say that, okay? And then we have our last point, which is glorification, okay? Uh, this is what the, the B fam says on glorification, and then we will quickly close. Glorification is the culmination of salvation and is the final blessed and abiding state of the redeemed, okay? New resurrected bodies, okay? Uh, I want to close with some scripture. I preached on these three. This was the very first sermon I did uh, at the church I am with now, and I think it was more like a trial run. Let's see what he's going to talk about, and um, I don't think it was really good, uh, but anywho, uh, this, uh, reading this text reminds me of the, the first sermon I did here, and uh, I love this text, okay? Uh, this comes from Philippians chapter 3. Uh, verse 12 is where I'm going to start. It kind of hits at least two of the three, if not all three. Not that I have um, already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own, okay? Uh, not that he has already obtained glorification, but he's continuing pressing on. So you've got sanctification right there. Uh, because Christ Jesus has made me his own, okay? There's... There's justification right there. Uh, brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us who are mature think this way, and if anything, 
you think otherwise, God will reveal it to you also. Only let us hold true to what we have attained. What have you attained? And the last little bit, the so what is, what have you attained? Well, I know for me personally, because of the great God in the highest heaven, I have obtained salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, I will continue attempting to do my very best in honoring and glorifying the Lord with the time I am given. Therefore, the challenge is so for you, so that you're not just sitting here thinking of this step, even though this step is so sweet. Think of your sanctification. How am I going to live the rest of my days to honor and glorify the Lord? I know that I've just recently had a struggle with this in the past month. I think God is really teaching me something about time and how I spend my time. And if I do one thing that that I really enjoy, but it also takes away from something else that could be glorifying to the Lord, I'm, I'm really just wanting to maximize that to the best of the Holy Spirit of my given ability. Okay? So make no mistake, it, it's God's part who redeems us, but after that it is up to us and helping and, well not really helping, but the Holy Spirit advocating for us and resting and trusting in the goodness of God to fulfill God's purpose in our life. Okay? So the challenge is, how are you going to spend the rest of your days? Are you going to continue looking at the past? Or are you going to press on and say, if God allows, I will do. That's my challenge for you folks. I hope you guys have a great Jesus-filled week. And Lord willing, we're going to catch you in the next one. All right? Sound good? All right. Bye, everybody. Hope you guys have